across the fence we're at the University of Vermont's Fleming Museum. A new exhibition looks at self-confession, intimate conversation, and representation in comic form. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. The Fleming Museum has been bringing world-class art to people in Vermont for over 80 years. The museum kicks off 2018 with exhibitions from cartoonists past and present. One is called Self-Confessed, the inappropriately intimate comics of Alison Bechdel. Allison lives in Bolton. She's known for her graphic novel, Fun Home, which is adapted into a Tony Award-winning Broadway musical. Allison is also Vermont's cartoonist laureate. That exhibit is paired with Honoré de Mia's Blue Stockings. These satirical cartoons from the 1840s poke fun at upper-class women who were trying to redefine their narrowly defined roles in society. The exhibit asks how we acknowledge wit while pointing out what's wrong, but still relevant in popular culture. Joining me are the co-curators of these two exhibitions, Margaret Tamulonis and Andrea Rosen. Great to see both of you. Margaret, comics have come a long way since the fun, sunny, Sunday funnies, but is it still weird to see comics in an art museum? You know, I don't find it weird at all, but I find it incredibly exciting, especially works by Alison Bechdel. Mm -hmm. And so gender roles and sexuality play a big part in these two exhibitions. How do you curate an exhibition that's provocative by its nature? I think we're as honest as Allison is with her work. We, we show it all, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it helps that the title that Allison came up with, Inappropriately Intimate, puts it right on the front door mm -hmm. for anyone who's worried about that. But I think it also speaks to um, our community, which is um, you know, really game for what we have to present, even when it's provocative, particularly being within a university setting where Allison's work is taught in English classes. How important is it, do you think, to bring different kinds of exhibitions to folks? incredibly important because we want to have all sorts of conversations here at the museum and it's been great to see those sorts of conversations happen both in this exhibition, the exhibitions last semester and, and so on. Mm -hmm. What do you hope that folks take away from, from this exhibition? Um, I hope they all fall in love with Allison's work as much as we have in, in years past even before we started working on this show. Um, you know I think that uh, Allison's experience and her work communicate something human, you know, as particular as her experience is. Um, it's about the quest for love, acceptance, and community. And Andrew, tell us about the other exhibition this spring, Blue Stockings. So uh, Henri Daumier was a French caricaturist of the 19th century, um, very satirical. He poked fun at everyone. And this is a series where he's making fun of women who are pursuing literary ambitions, um, you know, not always a kind satire. He's pretty mocking of them. Um, so it was a really interesting show to pair with Allison, you know, a cartoonist from previous century and today. Um, and, and she cites Domier as an influence. Um, and, you know, also in this sort of Me Too moment, how do you look at a, a cartoonist of a previous century who's making fun of women pursuing their, their dreams um, and sort of acknowledge that moment in history and also think about where we are right now? Mm -hmm. um, do you think folks will find that sort of inappropriate to have that kind of an exhibit in this day and age? I think it's surprising in some ways. When we were first looking at all of the artwork and seeing it all together, it was almost overwhelming to see his attitude towards blue stockings. But in the end, it, it really starts a really, really good conversation. I think the text in the show shows that. What does blue stockings mean? So um, it started as a literary society in, um, in England, um, a very particular group of upper class women who started meeting and writing. Um, and then the term spread to apply to any woman with literary or intellectual ambitions. And it came to have this derogatory cast to it. So Domier is not the only one who was making fun of blue stockings at this time. It was a pretty, pretty easy target at the time. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> I want to thank you both for being on our program today. Thank you. Now one thing you'll see when you visit the Fleming this spring is that Alison Bechdel is everywhere. Not only is her work hanging on the gallery walls, it's also a part of the walls. The exhibition features several original drawings that Bechdel drew of herself. Well, Alison joins me now. Her novel, Fun Home, was named one of the best books of 2006 by the New York Times. She's a 2014 recipient of the MacArthur Genius Award, and she's also Vermont's cartoon, cartoonist laureate. Well, and now you're on Across the Fence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So now when you're creating a comic, what comes first, the words or the images? That is the big question. And I honestly, I don't know. I, it's a process that remains mysterious to me even 
as I do it every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely a, uh, it might look like I'm writing if you watch me over my shoulder on my computer, but I'm writing in a drawing program. So I'm placing my text in different spots on the page. I'm making word balloons. It's a visual way of writing. And I'm also imagining the images that are going to be in these panels that I'm drawing. So it's, a, it's all happening at once, but in a very confusing way. <laughs> Now, as this exhibition title states, your comics are self-confessional and intimate. How do you decide to make such private matters public? Well, uh, I feel like, I mean, as a, as a young person coming out as a lesbian, mm -hmm. I realized that I, I wanted to make art about my life. I wanted to make comics about my life. And that meant revealing this very intimate information. Um, so I just got used to that sort of format very early on, like just, I, in a way I feel like I'm quite private, but I've been exposing the intimate details of my life to the public for 30 years, so I, that's not quite accurate, but um, somehow I just had to do it. Mm -hmm. And so your work is mostly autobiographical. What are the challenges of always having to draw yourself? <laughs> you know, it's funny. One challenge is, um, well, it, it, I've drawn these autobiographical works which are about the whole course of my life. So I've got to draw myself at different ages um, with different haircuts and you have to make yourself identifiable over time. So that was tricky. But I think um, what I've done is I've sort of, my personal, I've changed my personal appearance to make myself easy to draw. <laughs> so I kind of look like a drawing. <laughs> That's a good way. Yeah, that helps. One of the things that I love in your book especially is when you know, you're reading through it and you can see the illustrations or the drawings, um, you put elements in that are very personal to other people at that time. In other words, when sometimes when the kids were watching TV, I saw the, the Batman logo, which yeah. and I remember watching that as a kid and seeing you know, in the sky the Batman, the call for Batman to go out, and um, Yogi Bear. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I'm just I'm a very visual person and all those uh, logos and icons of different times. I just, are, they very much mark up an era. They call to mind a specific moment in time. So mm -hmm. I like to do that when I can. Now your first published work was Dykes to Watch Out For in 1983. Who were your readers at that time? And what did you hope to accomplish by this, this comic strip? I had about three people who were my readers. <laughs> <laughs> first they were just my friends. And then I started publishing these, these comics about lesbians like me and my friends in a small feminist paper in New York City. Um, so it gradually built up a following, but you know, quite small. Uh, and then I began syndicating it to other newspapers, alternative newspapers that were starting up at that time that were specifically for gay and lesbian audiences. So for a long time, that's who read my work, gay people. Mm -hmm. And we, we were able to read your work in seven days here in Vermont. Yes, yeah, so in, in 1997, Seven Days started running the strip, but it had been, I'd been doing it for like almost 15 years at that point. So it slowly was able to get a little bit of a wider readership. And how did the readership change over time? And, and what did that mean to you that, that not only lesbians were reading this, but everyone's reading it? Well, everyone didn't quite read it. That's, I, I, I wish they had been. Mm -hmm. um, but Vermont, you know, it's sort of a special place. And being able to run in a non-gay paper in Vermont was great, but it didn't quite happen in other places. Other newspapers weren't quite willing to take that risk or just didn't have the readership who would go along with it. So it never really had a big mainstream crossover. Um, in a way, it's gotten a, almost a sort of retroactive um, attention in the mainstream because my book Fun Home did crossover. This book about my family did get a bigger readership. And, and I'm happy that Dykes to Watch Out For kind of got grandfathered or grandmothered in along with that somehow. And so in your comic strip you developed something called The Rule. What is that? Oh, this is actually the thing that I seem to be best known for, at, at least among young people. Um, the, the Bechdel test is, is this thing on the internet about how to gauge whether a movie treats its female characters properly. And it's fr it comes from this cartoon I did in 1985 called The Rule, and it's two women going to the movies. And I have to say up front, I stole this idea from a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, 
I had no idea for my cartoon that week, so I just stole this thing she had said to me. She, I thought it was really funny. My friend said, I'll only go see a movie if it has at least two women in it who talk to each other about something besides a man. And when you started to think about that, very few movies passed those criteria. And in fact, the only movie my friend was able to see at that point was Alien, because the, <laughs> the two women talked to each other about the monster. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really think much more about it after 1985 when I drew that thing, but somehow it got dredged up out of the archive and uh, young feminist film students popularized it and now it's become, it's become this thing, like this meme. And how do you think movies are doing, current movies are doing with your test? I think they're doing a lot better. Certainly not perfect and many movies still don't pass it. Um, but there's so many more options now than there were in 1985. That's true. And so you mentioned your novel, Fun Home. For viewers who are not familiar with it, what's it about? It's about um, me and my father. Um, it's about this very painful time in my life when I came out to my parents in college and found out that my dad had been living this closeted life, had been having affairs with other men and with some of his high school students, which totally blew me away. I had no idea. Um, I said in your book, you said that you almost felt like your news had been hijacked. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going to like make this kind of break with my parents. I'm growing up. I'm coming out. I'm, but instead, I just became like the background of their drama. Um, and then very shortly after that, my father was hit by a truck and what my mother was pretty sure was a suicide, that he'd done this intentionally. So it was a very um, crazy period of my life. I was in college. This all happened within a period of a few months. You know, I'm grappling with my own coming out and sexuality, getting into a relationship for the first time, and my, my father dies. Um, so that was just a really traumatic experience that I thought about over the years. and eventually felt like I wanted to write about. It felt significant somehow that both my father and I had been gay people growing up in this small Pennsylvania town, but our lives took very different courses. And it wasn't until I was almost 40, till I was at middle age, that I felt able to take that story on, but then I did. What was your family's reaction? Well, my, the big obstacle was telling my mother, like, what was my mother going to think of this? Cause it would, you know, she was very private. Her closest friends didn't know about my dad. They, had, my parents had spent their their marriage trying to keep this under wraps, keep it secret. And here I was coming along writing a book about it. But my mother was a pretty incredible person, and she understood literature and writing and respected writers. And she knew that I I wanted to tell the story, and so she. I didn't ask her for permission. Mm -hmm. I just said I'm doing this. And she didn't say, you can't do this, but I knew she wasn't happy about it. But uh, we just worked it out somehow. So let's fast forward to this exhibit at the Fleming Museum today. What are people going to see here? They're going to see like a selection of work from over the course of my whole career, even my pre-career. There's childhood stuff here at the very beginning. Um, you'll see early Dykes to Watch Out for comics, a selection of those over the 25-year period that I was drawing it. Images from both my family memoirs. From I wrote a book about my mother as well as Fun Home, which was about my dad. There's all kinds of interesting little cases with um, sketches and T-shirts I've designed. And some original artwork right on the wall. Oh yeah, and then I did I did paintings uh, on the wall to just kind of play with the scale of things in here, make it a little livelier. It's awesome. Oh, thank thank you. you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you. The 2018 spring exhibitions at UVM's Fleming Museum run until May 20th. For hours, directions, and admission, contact the Fleming at the website on your screen or you can call 802-656-2090. That's our program for today. Thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. I'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.